On the 5th of February 249, Cao Shuang and his brothers were going to accompany the Emperor 90 Li out of Luoyang to the Gaoping Mausoleum to pay respects to the late Cao Rui. On the night of February the 4th, Sima Yi sent spies to monitor the behaviour of his eldest children. Sima Shi was reported as acting as normal and sleeping peacefully. Sima Zhao, however, who was supposedly only informed of their plans the night before, tossed and turned in his bed. At the first opportunity, Sima Yi went to Yongning Palace to meet with Empress Guo. He collected a decree from her which ordered for the removal of Cao Shuang and his brothers from power. With this authority, the Sima could now close shut the gates of Luoyang. Sima Shi had previously got his 3,000 followers into position at Sima Gate, and they gathered without raising suspicion. He could now safely lead them to occupy the other palace gates one by one, without anyone being able to inform Cao Shuang. Sima Yi later commented, this son worked really well. His troops were soon lined up along the palace grounds, where they passed through Cao Shuang's camp. The head controller of the camp was on an upper floor, drawing his crossbow with the intent to shoot Sima Yi. Three times he raised it and prepared to fire, but did not. His colleague stopped him when he said, We don't know what will happen. Sima Yi granted imperial authority to the Minister of Masses Gao Ru and made him the acting general-in-chief. His first order was to take command of Cao Shuang's troops. Wang Guan, who had earlier been recommended by Sima Yi, was made acting commandant of the Central Army. He was ordered to take command over Cao Shi's troops. Jiang Zhi sorted out of the city with Sima Yi to the pontoon bridge above the Luo River, where Sima sent a letter listing Cao Shuang's crimes to the emperor. The memorial asked Cao Fang to remove Cao Shuang from power altogether. He accused him of not fulfilling his duty as a regent by corrupting the government, and also exposed him as a traitor by conspiring to take the throne for himself, but the letter was intercepted. The Minister of Finance, Huan Fan, fled the city and passed by Changping Gate, where he encountered its guard, who used to serve under him. He told his trusted servant Si Fan, The Imperial Tutor is planning to commit treason, you should come with me. Si Fan refused to move and stayed behind and hid himself. When he learned that Huan Fan had made his way to Cao Shuang's camp, Sima Yi commented, The bag of wisdom is gone. Jiang Zhi replied, He is indeed wise, but stupid donkeys pay too much attention to the carrot. I'm certain that Cao Shuang will not be wise enough to employ his counsel. He did indeed try to convince Tao Shuang to flee to Shu Chang, brand Sima Yi as a traitor, then raise troops to fight against him, but he was ignored, so the army remained undecided. Instead, Tao Shuang sent the emperor south of the Yu River, whilst he continued to have his men cut down trees to build anti-cavalry fortifications. Xu Yun and Chen Dai witnessed that there were only a thousand men guarding against their advances when they were sent as messengers to ask for surrender. Denied, Sima Yi then sent Yin Damu, who was deeply trusted by Cao Shuang to plea for his surrender, insisting nothing more would come from this except for his removal from office. After hearing this, he eventually surrendered, as he incorrectly thought he could still live a life of luxury in retirement. Huan Fan scolded Cao Shuang and his brothers. Tao Zhen was a good man, yet he fathered you and your brothers. Little pigs and calves that you are, I never expected to be involved with your misdeeds, yet now this will get my family annihilated. During the court session, Cao Shuang and his brothers were carefully guarded. The eunuch Zhang Dan came forward and accused them of treason, then exposed their plot to seize the throne for themselves. All of those involved with the brothers in the city were then arrested, including He Yan, Ding Mi, Deng Yang, Bi Gui and Li Sheng. They were all executed on the same day, along with the rest of their families and relatives. As Si Fan had surrendered himself over to Sima Yi, he reported what happened at Changping Gate, when he earlier saw Huan Fan. Sima asked him what the punishment is for accusing someone of treason, and then he received the answer. The one who makes the false accusation should himself be punished for it. As such, Huan Fan was then also executed along with the rest of his family. Jiang Ji vouched for the Tao brothers and tried to have them spared in consideration of the great contributions by their father Tao Zhen, but Sima Yi refused. The only recorded people who were not killed were two subordinates of the Taos who were spared under the rationale that each of them was only serving his master. Sima Yi's extermination of the Tao clan shocked many officials who had originally supported it, but by now it was too late to try and prevent it. Sun Li was eventually reinstated as the governor of Bing province, so he went to visit Sima Yi before taking his leave. Noticing that something was amiss, Sima asked him if he saw something wrong with governing over Bing. Sun Li replied that he didn't take official ranks or past affairs to heart, but that he was worried about the future of the dynasty. 
Sima Yi replied, stop for the time being and barely unbearable. A member of the aristocrat Shiho family now found herself widowed as her husband Tao Wen Shu had perished in the coop. Her family wanted her to remarry, but she responded by cutting off her ears and then later her nose. Her family stressed that the Tao clan had been eliminated and that her exceeding loyalty was not necessary. She affirmed, I have heard a person of worth does not renounce their principles because of changes in fortune, nor change their mind in the face of preservation or destruction. While the Tao flourished, I made vows to keep my chastity. Now that they declined and perished, how can I bear to renounce them? Even animals do not act in this manner, how can I? When Sima Yi heard this, he allowed her to adopt a son as an heir to carry on the Tao family name. Tao Fang appointed Sima Yi as Imperial Chancellor and added another four counties to his mark estate, bringing the size of it to span over eight counties with 20,000 taxable households. He declined the position of Chancellor, but was still granted the privilege of not having to announce his name when he spoke to the Emperor. The next year, in 250, he was awarded the Nine Bestowments, which were typically seen as a sign of a powerful official showing off his complete control over an Emperor. Sima Yi declined this as well, so was granted the extra privilege of not having to kneel during court sessions. There was a family shrine built for the Sima in Luoyang, under the order of Tao Fang, then he continued to reward Sima Yi. The number in his personal staff was increased, some were awarded, and his sons Sima Rong and Sima Lun were made village Marquis. By now, Sima Yi actually was chronically ill, so could not regularly attend court sessions. Tao Fang often visited him at his home to keep him informed and consult him on policy issues. The Grand Commandant of Yan Province, Wang Ling, had become worried about Sima Yi's growing influence over the Emperor. His son Wang Guang once said, Sima Yi cannot be fathomed, but what he does never runs contrary to the situation. He gives assignments to the worthy and capable, whilst crediting those who are better than himself. He practices the laws of the former lords, and satisfies the people's desires. Of whatever Tao Shuang did wrong, Sima Yi has left nothing uncorrected. He does not relax his efforts day and night. His primary aim is clearly to soothe the people. Wang Ling plotted of his nephew Ling Hu Yu to overthrow Sima Yi's regime. He planned to replace Tao Fang with his uncle Tao Biao, and then moved the capital to Xu Chang, but the plan already suffered setbacks, as Ling Hu Yu had already passed away in the last year or so. In 251, he asked for troops from the government to resist an approaching Wu force that was en route to the Tu River. He may have been lying, because he wanted to use the soldiers for his own malicious purposes, or the Wu troops could have indeed been obstructing the river. Either way, Sima Yi didn't trust him, and so denied the request. He then mobilised armies to attack Wang Ling after officials such as Yang Hong leaked information about the rebellion. Xu Gudan was also granted greater powers by Sima Yi and led his own forces to join in on the attack. After travelling down the river for a few days, Sima Yi's army reached Gan Cheng where they met with Wang Yu. He apologised on behalf of his master, then handed over Wang Ling's ceremonial axe. By the time Sima Yi reached Xu Tu, Wang Ling had tied himself up he was quickly unbound by a registrar who reassured him of his safety. He met with Sima Yi at Wu Xiu, where he had his official seal and axe returned to him. If I'm guilty, you can summon me to meet you. Why do you need to come and meet me here? Sima Yi replied, because you don't respond to summons. Wang Ling blamed Sima Yi for failing him, but Sima Yi admitted he would rather fail Wang Ling than to fail the state. On the way back to Luoyang as a prisoner, Wang Ling asked if he was allowed nails for his coffin. He wanted to figure out what his eventual fate would be, and became deeply worried when Sima Yi granted them for him. When they passed by a shrine to honour the general Jia Kui, Wang Ling exclaimed, Jia Liang Dao, only the gods know Wang Ling is truly loyal to Wei. He was forced to commit suicide by consuming poison, then Sima Yi had his conspirators arrested and executed along with their families. The younger sister of Wang Ling was Guo Hua's wife, so she was also taken into custody by high-level imperial supervisors. Guo Hua was apprehensive about letting her be taken away, but did not want to push things further and put his whole family at risk. His five sons cowed before him until all their heads started bleeding, so he eventually relented by allowing them to take some men to go and fetch his wife. He wrote to Sima Yi, My five sons are willing to sacrifice their lives for their mother. If they lose her, I lose them. Without my five sons, I will no longer exist. If I have violated the law by seizing back my wife from the imperial censors, I am willing to face the emperor and take full responsibility for my actions. 
After reading this letter, Sima Yi made an exception for Guo Hua's wife and pardoned her. By now, Wang Ling and his nephew, Ling Hu Yu's corpses, had been dragged out of their tombs. Their bodies had been exposed to the elements for all to see for three days in the nearest marketplace. In July of 251, Cao Biao was forced to commit suicide, and Sima Yi relocated the other nobles from the Cao family to Yi. They were effectively kept under house arrest by Sima Yi's fourth son, Sima Zhou. His first ever appointment here is the Ning Shuo general put him in charge of security for the Wei nobles living in Yi. For suppressing this rebellion, Sima Yi was rewarded as a duke and appointed as a chancellor of the state, but he denied both titles. Some of his brothers and grandsons were rewarded Marquis states as well, so by now the Sima clan had over 19 Marquis and 50,000 taxable households. When Sima Yi fell critically ill in 251, he became bedridden. He often dreamt about Xie Kui and Wang Ling being honoured in the afterlife, where they were ghosts who hated him, so he became deeply disturbed. He died the same year at the age of 73, where after he was posthumously honoured as a Chancellor of the State. This title would have allowed his coffin to be drawn in a nice fancy horse-drawn carriage on the way to the funeral. Sima Fu stepped in however and denied it on his brother's behalf, knowing he would have done the same if he were still alive. Following the arrangements he had made earlier, he was buried a month later at Mount Shuoyang, with no markers such as tombstones or trees. He desired to be dressed in plain clothes, with no luxury items placed around his tomb. He also didn't want any family members that died after him to be buried anywhere near him. A descendant of Sima Yi, Emperor Ming, once asked about the origins of the Jin Dynasty. He was told everything, from the start of Sima Yi's career up to Tao Mao's attempted coup against Sima Zhao. After hearing this, he was shocked. If what you said is true, how can a Jin expect to last long? When the Son of Heaven was outside, Sima Yi raised armoured troops from the inside. An utmost good form was confused by this. How can the heart of an Emperor's assistant be formally loyal and later rebellious? You might as well be the thief who steals gold when the marketplace is its busiest, claiming you could not even see the people. The greed that you indulge today will echo into eternity. The profit that you pursue today will destroy your reputation. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.